Hi everyone, welcome back to Herky the Cavalier's channel. I am here today with Herky and Milton and today we have a fun video for you. It's our recent Amazon finds and this is very exciting for us because we found some really good stuff recently and I thought it would be the perfect occasion to share some of the products I got Herky and Milton but also for myself. I know last time we did um, this kind of Amazon video uh, some of you requested to do some human items in it too and I'm here for you. I'm here to, sh to share some of my favorite products with you as well that I got recently. So before we jump into this video I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you all so much for the love, support, the kind messages, emails, everything. Anybody that left a comment, that watched a video, that liked it, that reached out, you're all so super nice and supportive and I knew I could always count on this community to make us feel at ease to share our story. And if you don't know what we're talking about, it's our fertility journey that I posted a few weeks ago followed by the nursery tour of our future baby. So now you're all up to speed and we can jump right on to a lighter video. And of course, since this is my life now, there are some pregnancy related items in here, but I will start with the dog stuff, of course. So let's jump right into the topic. So first item I wanna talk about is the Holly Roller. And I discovered this through a dog trainer. She's called City Dog Expert, it's Kimberly. She is so amazing. And she talked about this toy for the puffs and how it's such a good enrichment toy. And she suggested to use these, <laughs> stay Milton, as, um, as an enrichment toy. So she suggests putting this and tearing up some rags and then putting treats in it and then your pups can really go to town on these balls and like retrieve the treats and really have fun with it. But as you can see, Milton is a big ball lover so she's been really enjoying just playing with this as a ball and it's been really fun. And what's really fun also is that I didn't know but Herky is a big fan of fetch as well and it's just because usually Milton is so into it that she doesn't really get a chance to play so we got two of them and usually Andy and I will play with them together so that Herky can really play by herself as well but this is great for her because Herky not only does she like fetch sweet little angel but she also loves to tug and the way that this ball is shaped she can just bite somewhere in here and we can also grab the ball super easily and tug like that. This one specifically that Herky and Milton have is a size medium. I initially got the size jumbo because I don't know why I got the size jumbo but I ended up um, not even needing to return them because uh, some of our staff at work just decided to keep them because they have a bigger dog and for a toddler this would be great too so, so other people at work decided to keep one for their big dog and the other one for their toddler because this is also could be a great toy for a toddler but if you want the, this exact size it's a medium. So another enrichment toy that I recently got them is this new snuffle mat and this is kind of the idea of the holly roller enrichment toy like you would rip up some little rags like this put treats in it and put it all in here so that your pups can go to town on that but this is specifically for sniffing and snuffling and digging treats in it so herky and milton really like this and as you know we had a previous one before actually we, we still have it but it's just not as fluffy as this one this one is much softer and it has a lot more volume and um digging potential. The other one was kind of flimsier. It's also from Amazon, but this one, not only does it look cuter, but it also has a lot of volume for you to hide treats in it. And Herc and Milton can really spend a good, I would say 15 minutes each of them with this mat. So it does, it does kind of entertain them for a bit, which I really enjoy. And this one also has like this plastic on the bottom so that it kind of stays in place really well when you put it on a rug on the floor. It doesn't just slide everywhere, but uh, if you have some ferocious pups like Milton, it can start sliding here and there, but I really like how fluffy it is and I really enjoy the colors of this one. Okay, and this is some basic essentials for Herky and Milton, but I recently got a refill of a toothpaste for the girls and I got another brand just because I think the one that I usually got, it got a bit expensive on Amazon, so... Mm -hmm. This is the one from Blue Stem. It does come with a toothbrush, which is amazing. Remember, if you brush your dog's teeth at home to replace the toothbrush every two months, I would say, because there's a lot of bacteria buildup in there. So we love to switch out the toothbrush really frequently. And I love that it comes with a toothbrush. Dual-ended. I like to use the big side on Herky's mouth and then the small side on Milton's mouth. So it's great to have a backup. This is a bit different from the other enzymatic toothpaste that we use. This is another technology. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. 
This is another technology, so it's like a gel toothpaste, but it has a Coactive Plus, which I think if it works, if it's my understanding, like it really grabs onto the plaque on the teeth and helps it just dissolve on its own. So it's not enzymatic, but um, it does work in a specific way. Yeah, so their technology is formulated to fight plaque, reduce tartar, and freshen breath. So either one, if you like the Enzident or this one, I really suggest that you go with the vanilla mint flavor. Uh, the pups love it just as much, but it just smells better than the chicken flavor, according to me, for the toothpaste. So that's another one of the essentials that we recently got on Amazon. And another essential for us, this is part of our daily routine, is the Ferrapet Organics hip and joint chew as you know or if you may not know Herky and Milton have luxating patellas Milton has two luxating patella and Herky has one and they are asymptomatic and they've been diagnosed I think two years ago um, it hasn't gotten worse and we do use these chews every single day so if you missed that whole sequence or of videos regarding their luxating patella I'm gonna link their vet visit up here for you to watch but this is what we love to give them they love the taste and i really trust the owner behind this brand so i just love repurchasing this and if it can make a difference in their joints and their chew in their joints in their joints then why not you already had yours today you already had it you want more you're so cute little teddy bear okay and this is sort of a dog item but it's more for me I think that for them it's a dog cookbook and this cookbook let me tell you it is so beautiful I'm gonna be completely honest with you I haven't tried a recipe in it yet but it's just such a pretty book if you like books if you like fun items just to leave around this is a great coffee table book to have around as well the illustrations in here are just amazing and I was showing this on Instagram earlier and somebody was saying oh I would just get the book for the illustrations and they're totally right everything looks so beautiful in here it's so well written and photographed the color choices are amazing so it talks about basics of dog nutrition it talks about raw feeding it talks about cooked meal kibble it tells you all the difference between all the different diets that you can offer your dog and then of course it has some recipes and not all recipes are raw so you do have some raw recipes in here but you also have some cooked recipes you have smoothie recipes you have cookie recipes treats recipes but you also have some wellness and special occasion and by wellness what I really like so again you have a bunch of different celebratory recipes that you can do on here but for example for wellness there's recipe for a toothpaste for a paw balm for a natural flea spray so it's a very very complete book that's just very enjoyable to flip through and just very pretty to look at. So this was recently launched in Canada. I think it's available in the US already and in Australia. So it's really an affordable price too for what you get. So I highly recommend you checking out this book. It's, oh, I didn't say the name. It's called My Dog Eats Better Than Me. Recipes Your Dog Will Love by Fiona Ray and Jackie Melville. Okay, now on to human items. The first I want to talk about is this exercise ball. And if you know by now, you know that I'm pregnant. So I'm really getting more and more into exercises to prepare for labor, to prepare for childbirth, just to get more comfortable stretching, all that pregnant woman stuff. So apparently I really needed this ball. So I got this ball and it doesn't come all inflated like this, of course. I'm going to insert the size, but I believe it's a size medium. I think it's the 56. 58 to 65 centimeters and that's according to your height so i'm a pretty short person so this is the ball that's appropriate for me it comes all folded with a pump that you don't have to to like blow into it's like a manual pump to blow this up to to the size that you need and i really like how how gooey it is it's very comfortable it's good quality for what it is so i Highly recommend that if you either want this for posture, a lot of people use this instead of a, an office chair to help with their posture, but also for exercises in general. You don't need to be pregnant to get one of these balls. So I'm very happy that I got it on Amazon and it works fine for me. And of course you can choose the color. And fun fact, Milton really is obsessed with this ball. It's actually hilarious. It's like a giant ball and you know how much she loves balls. So she will actually run after this and it's really funny. Look, look, look. Okay, and now on to another one of my favorite items. I've talked about water bottles before, but I recently switched to a hydro flask. I used to be a swell girl, and I still do have my swell, but I leave it at the office and at home. I just carry around the hydro flask because 
I am a strong advocate of drinking water and staying hydrated and apparently when you're pregnant you have to drink extra lot of water so this is the 32 ounce bottle and I try to drink three to four per day I never used to like these spouts before because I thought they were so dirty but I'm converted absolutely like I just leave it open like this and you can just sip on it way better than if you were to go like this It wasn't close properly and that's a mega fail. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to actually go like this to drink water. You can just go like this. I leave it on the table. I leave it on my bedside and then oh, at night you can just grab it over and go like this. Super easily and I find it very easy to stay hydrated when you have something like this. And to help you clean this, I also bought a little pack of um, straw. I'm completely wet at this point. This is gross. Straw cleaner. So it's really, really small. Uh, sponges and wands that help you get straws and just little things clean so now um, every day I just wash this bottle with that to prevent any bacteria buildup and anything gross so it also keeps your beverages cold for super long and then hot for super long as well and what I like about Hydro Flask versus Swell is that this is machine washable that's a game changer for me like the Swell has a smaller spout so it's not as easy to clean but I really really love this one and if you want something to help you stay hydrated, I highly recommend you checking out the Hydro Flask. Okay, now more pregnancy things. You probably don't know this, but I'm not a reader. Like, I don't like books. I'm not a person that reads. And it's surprising that I even got through law school and lawyered for a few years without being a reader, if that makes sense. But recently, I've been getting so much into reading, probably f with pregnancy. And at first, I was pretty detached with this pregnancy just because I was holding my breath throughout the, the whole first trimester. But I wanted to get more prepared and more ready. And especially ever since I hit the 20 week mark, I feel like everything is going by so quickly and I feel unprepared. So I really got into these these books. I have four of them to mention to you, although two of them are in the bedroom. And I'm too lazy to get up because you know what, it's, it's actually a struggle for me now to get up and sit down so I'm not gonna go grab them but I have four. So the first one I want to talk to you about is what to expect when you're expecting. This is one of like the Bibles of pregnancy. Everybody reads this. It's a more traditional book on what happens during pregnancy. It walks you through every week of your pregnancy and it explains every symptom, what happens, what you can expect. Um, it explains everything in a very in-depth manner and if you know if you're pregnant or if you've been pregnant they also have an app called what to expect so this is like the book that comes with it again it's a more traditional view on things but uh, it's really good for you to know all the symptoms and it just guides you through each trimester and each week so it's easy and it's pretty easy to read too you don't have to just read through the entire thing you can just go week by week there's a pretty good index at the end if you want to look certain topics so that's really good. Another one that I've been loving at the moment, I actually really like this one and I highly encourage this one. It's called Expecting Better. And this is more based on kind of debunking the pregnancy myths and recommendation, but based on data and statistical analysis and studies. Why the conventional pregnancy wisdom is wrong and what you really need to know. Because I feel like as soon as you get pregnant, there's so much pressure and there's so much things right away that people tell you, you can't do this, you can't do this, but why? And what's the actual risk if you do certain things? And I know it can be taboo, but if you actually base it on facts and on data, you'll see that every woman should be allowed to get presented the real facts and then she can judge by herself if yes or no, it's worth taking the risk. Because in the end, you're told right away that you can't eat sushi, you can't drink alcohol, you can't drink coffee, but what would actually happen if you have one cup of coffee per day? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen if you have one glass of wine per week? Truly. So this book really goes through all of those things and explains what the studies are based on, what the pros and cons are, what the facts are, and the author is actually an economics professor at, at Brown University. So you know she knows what she's talking about and she likes to present you with the real stuff. So I highly recommend this. Highly recommend. The two other books that I have are Mindful Birthing and that book is I'm just getting started with it but it's really to get you ready for childbirth and it gets you in the right mind frame and the right perspective for childbirth because of course everybody's going to be afraid of childbirth at first I think but when you get into the mindset that um, 
the pain is going to be inevitable and it just guides you through uh, techniques and how to cope with pain and everything so that book is going to be really good to change your mindset on birthing but i'm just getting started with that book but also in the other book that i have to recommend it's called bringing up baby and it's a book on parenting according to the french and it compares it with the traditional American method of upbringing children. And I saw a couple of people reading it around on Instagram and I thought it, it, it looks really cute also. And when I read the synopsis about what the book is about, I really enjoyed the fact that uh, it breaks down how to approach education of your baby from the moment that they're born. And it just compares the perspective about French babies versus American babies. You know, it's another perspective. So bringing up baby is really why French parenting helps kids eat normal food, behave themselves, and sleep all night. So what the book is, is an American woman discovers the wisdom of French parenting. It recounts her experiences raising a child in Paris where she found French kids to be more well-behaved, polite, autonomous, and more willing to sleep through the night, unlike their American counterparts. So that's what I read, and what I read, like the key points of the book, I really, really agreed with a lot of them. So that book is not going to be applicable to us right away but it's really good to just get through it and be able to get ready once the baby comes so those are my book recommendations and last but certainly not least you probably know if you're pregnant or if if you've been pregnant you know that taking care of that growing belly and that skin is really important and I've had a pretty strict regimen just in general with my skin I always apply moisturizer all the time and sunscreen all the time so take care of that skin you're in you only have one but the growing belly is really something to take care of and I know that this might not be the only thing that's gonna help prevent stretch marks and I know it's hereditary my mom did get stretch marks although all my girlfriends around me none of them have stretch marks so what I want to do is help prevent it the best I can so right now I'm oiling and taking care of the belly three times a day. I know that might seem excessive, but that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of finding a groove and a routine with that, and I'm really enjoying it. First trimester, I was doing it just uh, once or twice a day, but now I'm doing it three times a day during the second trimester. I'm at the end of the second trimester. So these are some of the products I love. I have, this is a classic, is the Bio Oil. This is um, a specialist scar and stretch mark products. It helps improve the appearance of existing stretch marks and helps reduce appearance of stretch marks during pregnancy and rapid weight gain. So I love to use this one at night, just especially after a shower when your skin absorbs much faster. You can use it alone or in combination with uh, another body lotion, but I do love how this one smells. It's a very classic pregnancy product. Everybody talks about this one. And even it's been around for so long that even my mom use this one and I know I said my mom has stretch marks and that might not be a good guide but everybody it's just to tell you that everybody and their mother uses this oil so this is my usually my nighttime oil another one I love to use at night is straight up sweet almond oil we use that for massages and for the belly as well it doesn't have much of a scent so if you are sensitive to scents I would recommend the sweet almond oil but if you have scent aversion like I did during my first pregnancy in July this was not working out for me like after a few days this was not working out for me so I switched to the sweet almond oil but this pregnancy I'm not having much smell aversion so I can use this again second product that I love is this Palmer's cocoa butter formula this one smells so good I've all, I just received it this is my second tub I just received it a few days ago and I've already dug like a really good amount on it just because I feel like the tub is small first of all but it smells like cocoa butter Come here, mother. It smells so delicious and it just it, it, it absorbs really well into the skin and I know on their website it says or on Amazon it says to use at night because it's so thick but I don't mind this thickness I usually wear uh, shorts and clothing that cover up my entire belly and it's not really sticky and it doesn't bother me so I love to use this either in the morning or midday it really doesn't bother me but I do love the smell of this one and third product I want to mention beside the sweet almond oil is this balm from Honest Beauty. This is technically an organic all-purpose balm. It doesn't say that it's for pregnant bellies, but I know you can use it for that. Like it's a thick balm. And again, I like to use this either in the morning or in the evening. This one feels the greasiest out of the two balms. So if you don't like greasy feeling, I would go for the cocoa butter formula from Palmer's. But this one is a bit greasier feeling. And it does have sort of a smell that's weird. It's unscented, but it does have like I don't know how to describe the smell, but it smells something. 
So if you wanted something that smells good, I would go for this one definitely. But if you don't mind the smell, and if you want something more luxurious and oily and greasy, I would go for this one. Greasy in the best way possible. So those were our recent Amazon finds and loves. Honestly, these products we use on the daily all of them except maybe the recipe book but you know so i hope you enjoyed this video everything i mentioned today will be linked in the description box below i hope it was helpful i hope you try something out if you love this kind of video do let me know i love finding things on amazon and if you do enjoy this video we're gonna do it more often don't forget to like this video and subscribe we love you and we'll see you next time bye and it's our recent amazon finds oh milton stay ouch <laughs> Oh, ah, go. Good girl. Oh my god, I'm so uncomfortable.